My favorite thing, my absolute favorite part of van life is that wherever you go, you're always home. You have everything you need with you, all your clothes, your food, your bed. If you're going out to the mountains for a day hike, if you wanna make a meal or take a nap, you can do anything you want because you have all your stuff with you. My name's Brad. I live full time in this work van. I travel the country servicing solar and electrical systems on vans, buses, and RVs. I've been living in a van for six years now, but before I started out my van life journey, I had a house, a mortgage, a full-time job, kind of all the things you think you need to have to be happy. But I was working so many hours that I was barely home to enjoy all the things I was working so hard for. And eventually I just kind of got sick of it. And I realized if I didn't have all these bills and expenses, I wouldn't have to work so much. So that's what I did. I decided to eliminate all of my bills. I sold everything I owned. I bought a cargo van on eBay and went down to my dad's house in Arizona to convert it into my first home on wheels. I live in a 2007 Ford E450 Econoline box truck. It's a lot larger than some of the vans other people drive, but it's got room for all my stuff and I have quite a bit of tools and supplies that I carry with me to do my jobs. Underneath my work table, I have these flex stack pack rack system and all the drawers lock into place so when I'm driving, I don't have to worry about things sliding open and spilling out all over the place. I have hole saw kits, I have uh, crimp connections, and then I have all these little containers that hold all my little parts and accessories. So this is my screw tray. I have another one that contains all my electrical connectors so I can easily find what I need as I'm working through a solar install. In my previous life, my traditional life, I was a heating and air conditioning repair technician. And so I had that mechanical and electrical type skill set. And my job basically consisted of driving around in a large service van all over the town, going to different people's homes, fixing their home heating and cooling equipment. So at this point, I was already almost living van life. I mean, I spent eight to nine hours a day driving around in my van. I ate lunch in my van. Uh, when I had break in between jobs, I would go to a park and go for a walk. And I was really only going home to sleep at night. And then the next morning, waking up early and then hopping in the van again to go work. And this is when it kind of just hit me. And I thought, why do I even have this house? I'm barely even using it. So then my train of thought went to what type of business could I run out of my van? Now, I already had skills as a heating and air conditioning technician, but I couldn't do that and still live van life because you're required to have a bunch of licenses that are specific to each individual state and city. So I needed to find a career path that would allow me to own my own business while also being free to travel about the country. And since I was already comfortable with electrical, I decided to go ahead and just install Install electrical for other folks on their vehicles because when you're working on vehicles there's no permits or licensing required like there is on homes the skill set pays really well so I'm able to work much fewer hours during the week than I would have to uh, back in my sticks and bricks style living now this van wasn't cheap but it also really wasn't that expensive I purchased it with 117,000 miles for around $12,000. There's still quite a bit of life left on this rig. In fact, when I was searching to buy this one, I saw plenty of examples on Facebook Marketplace with over 200,000, in some case over 300,000 miles that were still operational and up for sale. And I'll get many, many years of life out of this rig before I have to start thinking about replacing it. Now, one reason I chose this box truck platform is because the box shape gets you pretty much the largest interior dimensions possible. The floor to ceiling height is over seven feet. It's almost eight feet wide. But the cool thing about it is bumper to bumper, it's only 21 feet long. So I still have no problem finding parking in grocery stores or shopping malls, which was really important to me because I do a lot of city travel, stealth camping, and going to job sites where I don't wanna to have to worry about if I'll be able to find a parking space. Now the conversion is 100% DIY. So this started out as a completely empty U-Haul truck. I estimate I spent about $12,000 in parts and materials to complete the conversion. 
So we're talking about 12,000 for the van and then another 12,000 on parts and labor gives me a complete cost of about $24,000. The great thing about building your own van is that you get to lay everything out exactly the way you want it. So for me, I actually do a lot of my own cooking. So I wanted to incorporate a really large kitchen area so I was comfortable making a lot of meals. So I installed this large stainless steel commercial vent hood and this does a great job of getting all the cooking fumes out of the van. I use this thing every day, two to three times a day. It's been working fantastic. I also have an electric induction cooktop. I got the dual burner version so I can heat up water for my coffee while I'm also cooking bacon and eggs on the other side. Down here is my electrical cabinet. So this one unit takes the solar power from the sun, it charges my batteries, and it also takes that solar power and converts it into 110 volts for all my 110 volt appliances like my induction cooktop, my range hood, and charging my laptop. Down here I have two 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour time USB batteries for a total of 5,100 watt hours. I spent last summer in Texas and it was unbelievably hot and humid all summer. And so the air conditioner I installed is a 12,000 BTU ductless mini split. So it does heating as well as air conditioning. I have 1,200 watts of solar on the roof. I was able to run my air conditioner 24 seven in Texas all summer without any issues. Another thing I really enjoy about van life and a nomadic lifestyle is just the minimalism that it brings to your life. You learn that it really doesn't take that much to be happy. You don't need a new 70 inch TV. You don't need five winter jackets. One thing I wanna be clear about is living a minimalistic life doesn't mean you're going without. The key is just fewer things and keeping it simple, but you should still have nice things that you enjoy using and that en enhance the experience of your life. One thing you'll notice is how easy it is to save money when you're not constantly shopping. When you live in a small home like this, there's no room to put anything extra. So you're not doing those impulse buys, you're not out buying throw pillows, buying a new recliner, because you simply don't have space for it, but also your focus and attention shifts. And it's not so much about what do I need to acquire to make my life better, it's more about what experiences do I wanna to encounter to enrich my life? So it's a completely different thought process and you get out of the mindset of spending money to be happy and you drop down into the mindset of doing things to be happy. And I think that's a huge benefit. So this is my workspace where I get everything done. I was pretty strategic about putting my workstation right in front of a big window. And so I love when I'm in a beautiful place like this here in Arizona, I can sit here, work on my computer, and I can look outside at beautiful scenery. So even when I'm inside my van working, I still feel like I'm right out in nature. And you can see I have a lot more overhead storage up here. Uh, this is all basically for clothing. I just have all my pants and shirts folded up. And then everything that I wear most often is stored up in these uh, cabinets. And then additionally, I have these cubbies here. Uh, this one, this one is all full of t-shirts. This one up top is socks and underwear. So these are all kind of items where I don't need to really, you know, search for what I want. I just reach in, grab a pair of socks, you know, grab a t-shirt, it's folded up. So another important part of the kitchen experience and the bathroom experience is the sink. I wanted to go with a really large stainless steel sink. And so that's what I've done here. What I really like about this is it's deep so I can put in like my big instant pot when I'm done cooking, I can put it in and soak it and clean it out really easily. But also it has this drying rack. So when I wash a dish, I can just turn it upside down on the drying rack and let it drip dry. And then also it has this little um, tray right here, which is where I keep like my knife and and fork and spoon and all the things that I access often, I just keep them in this tray right here. 
And then the faucet itself, it swivels to the side and it also has the pull out, um, the pull out spray nozzle so you can easily clean out the sink when you're all done and then just put it right back. And also I'm really excited about this mirror. It's a light up mirror. It's kind of hard to see in the video because it's super bright today, but at nighttime I usually turn this on and this is like the only light I use when it's evening and I'm just laying down watching a movie or something. I'll kind of turn this backlight on and you can change the color temperature between a soft white and uh, like a bright white. There you go, like a bright white or a soft white. So you can change the color temperature and also you can change the brightness as well. So that's all the way low and then that's all the way high. So I saw these in a hotel once and I thought, man, that would be so cool to have in my van. So I hopped on Amazon and I got one for like 70 bucks. Super happy with that mirror. Now let's talk about the bed and kind of daytime hangout area. So I went with a double bench convertible bed configuration. And so what that means is both so what that means is both sides can fold up into bench position like this. So you can sit down, you could easily sit four to six people, three, two to three people on each bench. You can kind of hang out, have a conversation. And then this side, it does fold all the way against the wall to match this one. And that allows me access up to the cab through my pass-through door. Um, I like to always know that if I need to, I can get from my bed to the driver's seat of the cab without having to go outside. And so if I'm sleeping, all I have to do is fold the bed up into bench position and I can cruise through the access into the cab. This configuration, this is kind of my day bed setup. So nine times out of 10, this is what the van looks like during the day. And then this is a pretty comfortable spot uh, for me to hang out. I can see out all the windows. I have a little lap desk for my laptop. And so I'll sit here sometimes and edit videos and take Zoom calls and stuff. So this is kind of my hangout spot during the day. And then it's not quite long enough for me to sleep on. I'm, I'm a five foot 10, uh, but if you were a shorter person, you could actually probably just sleep in this amount of space. But I'll show you what I do when it's bedtime. So that's all it takes to be set up from daytime mode to nighttime mode. I just slide the cushions together and I have a super large, spacious, comfortable bed. And this is an eight inch memory foam mattress. And then on top of the mattress, I have a down mattress pad. And then I have a bed sheet to lay on, a bed sheet that goes on top of me. And I have my comforter. And then I also have this uh, little fur blanket as well. So super comfortable. You could easily sleep two people in this bed and have plenty of room to move around. So one question that comes up quite a bit is where's your bathroom? Where do you take a shower? And the answer is I don't have a shower in my van. I've lived in a van for over six years and I've never had a shower. And I came to realize pretty quick, I just don't need to shower that often. I shower about once a week. And for that, I have a Planet Fitness gym membership, or if I'm staying out um, in nature, you know, at a campground or a national park, I'll use their pay showers. Or additionally, you can go to truck stops like Loves or Pilot or Flying J, and they will have uh, showers in there as well, pay showers you can buy. But seriously, guys, in six years, I've really never had a problem uh, with needing a shower and not being able to find one. Now, as far as a toilet goes, yes, you absolutely need to have a toilet. And so what I do for a toilet is I use this separation toilet. It's made by Boxio. I'll show you guys how it works really quick. So it's super simple. What I like about it is it just looks like a milk crate, kind of like the ones I have over here. So it blends right in. It doesn't scream toilet. And all you do is you lift up the lid and it has a portion in the back where you put in a plastic bag, that's where the number two solid waste goes. And then when you're done using it, you sprinkle a um, hemp shavings on top and that absorbs the moisture and takes care of the odor. And then in the front here, uh, you can pull out this little stopper and that goes into a liquid container. And then when it's all full, you just pull this up, you dump out your liquid container and you throw your solid waste container into the trash and then you just start all over with a clean bag. So very simple to use, easy, Boxio.
this is my toilet. It's got the 6.8 liter V10 gas engine and it's not super efficient. My average fuel economy is about nine and a half miles per gallon. When you consider all my living expenses, it's still super affordable. Here's a chart I put together of my van life related expenses while traveling around Austin, Texas uh, from June 14th to July 12th of this previous year. So you can see that I spent $361 on gas and then my van insurance bill was about a hundred dollars so my total cost for all of my housing and travel and transportation was about four hundred and sixty dollars for the entire month and then when you add on top of it groceries and restaurant bill and then other miscellaneous like gym uh, my cell phone things like that my entire cost of living for that month in Austin, Texas, which is a very expensive place to live, was only $1,316. So it's very reasonable when you consider many people are paying more than that just for an apartment. And this is all my living expenses combined. So you can see that even though I only get nine and a half miles per gallon, my overall living expenses are still really, really low. Now, one big question that people ask me a lot, and I think it's pretty valid, is what are you gonna do for retirement? By the way, they're talking about bumping the retirement age up now to like 70, 75. So, you know, my answer is the same thing as everybody else. I do have some investment accounts that I put money into to save for my retirement, but my honest belief down to my core is that retirement is something that people look forward to when they're not looking forward to their normal daily life. When they have to go to a job they don't like, they have to sit in traffic, they have to spend a bunch of money on car leases and insurance and all this other expense, and they're working 50, 60 hours a week just to pay for these things, people are looking to retirement as like the finish line. Once I can retire, then I don't have to worry about all these things anymore. But what I've basically done is taken away all those things that stress people out, that force them to focus on retirement. And so, of course, it's important to work and make money and have a job. And the great thing about the pandemic is that a lot of jobs now have gone remote. And there's, I meet a lot of people living this lifestyle that make really good money. I've met software engineers that are making well over six figures a year, and I've met uh, many other people that have virtual jobs that pay really well. So I really want to try to shift people's mindset away from van life as being this like poverty situation where you're living in a van because you're broke and you only have this tiny amount of income. You can live in a van and make really good money but what you can do is put that really good money you're making into savings, into an investment, into land, and not just be spending that money on regular housing and living expenses. Something else I wanna point out is what do a lot of retired people do once they retire? A lot of retired people sell their homes and buy RVs, which is what I'm already doing. In fact, the main reason I first got into van life is I visited my father who worked for 30 plus years as a commercial electrician, followed all the normal path, bought a house, did the family. And then once he retired, he sold all his stuff, bought an RV and started traveling the country. And he's been doing that for like 10 years now. And once I saw him doing that, I thought, well, I want to do that. I want to travel. I. I don't want to have to work a job I don't enjoy and sit in traffic every day, so why not just do that now? So I feel like in actuality, although I am still working, I'm kind of already starting my retirement in the sense that I'm traveling, I'm living where I want to live, I have an immense sense of freedom, and the amount of hours that I have to work is much, much less than the amount of hours I would have to work if I was living in a sticks and bricks home and paying traditional costs of living. And if I was someone that was really focused on making money, 
I could work even more hours than I do and really build up a pretty fat savings account. So I would tell people that you really can't go wrong with van life as long as you have income and you have a positive trajectory of where you want to go in life and you enjoy adventure and you like being in nature. If you check yes on those boxes, van life is an absolute win. You can have the most adventure you've ever had. You can live in the most beautiful places you've ever lived. And your monthly expense can at the same time be the lowest it's ever been. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. And that's why I would encourage anyone who's considering it to give van life a try. Because if you check all those boxes, you won't regret it.